don't take video. <coughs> I can't take right, I'm not worrying about it. I'm not going to worry. It's still going to record. It's just... Um, hi, uh, just uh, John Wedge here. Just showing you London. I'm, on, I'm with Wilfred. Sorry, there's not much of a, a backdrop here. Right, Wilfred, if we get him shot there. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, Evelina. Hello, Alan. Sorry about this. It's, <coughs> again, it's... Um, Let's just try and get you in shot. Let's let the figures go up. Sorry, it looks like it might come out sideways, but um, unfortunately it's doing this. Um, it's just one of them things. Whenever ever I talk about anything to do with Satanism, this occurs, this occurs. So if you just come in shot there, Wilfred, we, hmm. we can't see you in shot now. Right, so I'll just let the figures go up. Let's go up to 200. <laughs> so, John, where you here? We're Wilfred, we're both having bad hair moments up on the roof here. So let's let the figures go up. Two more. Please, no comments about the comments coming up um, upside down. It's just, I just couldn't be bothered to, to muck around with the settings. Um, so can you please give me a thumbs up if we're, uh, we're both in shot. Right, so good evening everyone. Um, John Wedge here with, with um, another one of my brew with a view. Uh, they've been going for a few months now. I'm utilising every single um, minute that I can of this ridiculous uh, lockdown lunacy um, to promote the work that we're doing. And a as we've been seeing with a lot of the um, a lot of the work, um, been getting testimony after testimony. And what's happening is. Um, SRA, Satanic Ritual Abuse, keeps raising its head. Uh, at first it was a minority of the uh, testimonies that I was dealing with, but you know what? It, it, it's gone over that now and it's become really the majority of people that contact me now. There is a Satanic connotation. And one of the things that we're seeing with the uh, SRA testimonies is a very bizarre thing. It's the fact that the women that, that abuse children sexually, violently, emotionally and spiritually abuse children um, on a par, if not on a greater scale than men. Um, so I'm privileged to have Wilfred. Wilfred is a long-term friend and Wilfred has been campaigning tirelessly for decade after decade. And welcome, welcome to the roof, Wilfred. Hello. Um, you know, and, and what happens is when, when stuff comes my way, I always link in with Wilfred, um, you know, you've got such a wealth of knowledge. Um, now, you saw the testimony the other day of a lady called Jeanette. Mm -hmm. um, in respect to Jeanette, what Jeanette had to say, how does this tie in with what you dealt with in the past? Well, it has a lot of the common characteristics of SRA cases. For example, the use of tunnels. Yeah. Uh, the Satanists are quite keen on using tunnels to hold children in and to also do the SRA in yep. and to get from one place to another without being detected. Uh, a famous case in America, the McMartin case, where in a nursery school, children were being subjected to SRA. And during the investigation, a tunnel system was discovered underneath it right. that was so complicated that they had to bring in an archaeologist to fully map the system for them. Um, and why tunnels? What's the significance of tunnels? Well, it's, it's a very practical uh, thing for them to use. But the other interesting thing is, uh, if you look at the Bible, in Ezekiel chapter 8, where it talks about the leaders of ancient Israel secretly worshipping demons, a lot of it was done in tunnels. And in the book of Revelation, it's prophesied that at the time of the Antichrist, when judgment is coming upon the world for their sins and their abuses, which will of course include a lot of SRA, that the perpetrators of, of these abuses will be asking the mountains and the rocks to cover them. 
right. which is a which is an implied reference to yeah. going an underground. Yeah, underground it, tunnels. Yeah. So uh, there's, there appears to be a long-held practice of seeking to go underground for shelter, but also in buildings, I've noticed that Satanists like to use basements yeah. in buildings. Uh, so interesting characteristic that keeps coming up. Uh, not always, of course, but in many cases. And in the case of Jeanette, another characteristic was the uh, police reluctance to yep. deal with a case. Yep. I've come across buildings in the past, uh, like the farm, yep. uh, houses in some cases, which are specially protected by the police. And when somebody tries to expose the place to the police, the police threaten the the witness, uh, the whistleblower, and they are clearly not interested in investigating it. I, th I think, you know, uh, one of the things I noticed was that when, when I, um, I had a great career until I really looked into organised child abuse, which mm. probably um, aired some of it on missing children, which would, would tie in a lot with, um, with, with satanic abuse. Now, the attack I got came from high up. This, mm. These weren't coppers on the street. We get a lot of it when I get a lot of people contact me and they say, I think you're slightly out of shot there, Wilf, we've come this way mm -hmm. a little bit. You know, when people contact me and they say, look, Social workers are stealing children. The police are all masons and are all covering up. And it's not the, the the fact, not the truth, because a lot of them, the Bobby on the beat isn't your enemy. He will be used, but he'll be unwittingly used. What I found, these are people high up, and this is what I found high up in in um, in the institutions, like the police, which are deliberately covering it up. And if we look at Surrey, Surrey's cropped up a lot. Mm -hmm. If we look at um, the Rains List, I keep having mention of the Rains List. The Rains List is an acronym, R-A-I-N-S. Please, 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 I implore people, look up the Rains List. It was written by a lady called Joan Coleman. And I think, uh, you know, Wilfred, our chats wouldn't be the same if we don't uh, allude to the Rains List. And on it is a Metropolitan Police, well, two Metropolitan Police officers. One of them, again, I'm not going to name the guy because he hasn't, he hasn't faced any criminal proceedings yet. But one of them was in charge of the unit that I mm. was on, mm. which, which speaks volumes as well. Absolutely screams volumes. Now, the other thing with the testimonies that we've put out with brave people like Jeanette is that they get corroborated. Mm -hmm. And they do. So it looks like Jeanette is on its way to being corroborated by, by a third party. Mm -hmm. It looks like Vicky Ash's testimony uh, has almost certainly been corroborated by someone that's come to me. So the mm. work that we've been doing as an anti-Satanist community, Wilfred, mm. is paying off. Mm. Yes. Um, on the police point, I would say that uh, if you have an SRA case, don't withhold it from the police just because you assume that all of them are not going to help. You won't know until you approach them. So I would say, give it a try and test the waters. Exactly. And if they don't help you, and if they give you problems, at least you have that on record, and you can then try other options. But give them a chance to act on, on the case. Um, if you have evidence to support your case, be sure to keep a copy of it, uh, because when there's a cover-up, evidence has a habit of suddenly going missing. Or floods, or, or fires. Lost. Floods and fires. So always make sure you have a copy. On top of that, if you have some key information about, for example, in Jeanette's case, where, where uh, bodies are buried, it would be helpful if you can try and confirm that privately. Not all the bodies, but just one, for example. And before you go to the police because then you know that they're definitely still there and the Satanists haven't cleared it out yet. Because in some cases, the Satanists will come back and clear out all the bodies. Yeah. And then when the police come, and if they do their job and dig and find nothing, then they'll just think that you're making the whole story up. Yeah. So having some small confirmation for your own uh, knowledge before you go to them uh, may be helpful. And also, if the police are corrupt, just in case they are protecting that place, they may tip off 
the abusers that someone's on to them about where they buried the bodies. So you just want to go there and make sure it's still there um, if you can and take some pictures and, uh, and then go and see the police. So yeah, I mean, one has to be quite smart in doing this, in dealing with the police because you're not sure whether they're going to cooperate or they're, whether they're going to basically tip off the people you're trying to expose or simply ignore you. Well, well we, we, we see frustration all along. There was a group called Hoaxted mm. that, that were particularly um, energetic in sort of trying to discredit me and put me down. Now, mm. I got some good information from an insider and, and he, he's named them, mm -hmm. the members of them. And he said, John, they are a pro-Satanist group. Well, I think they're a Satanist group. Yeah, a Satanic group, yeah. yeah. And, and someone said, John, you're going to be attacked by paedophiles and paedophile protectors. Mm. And, and said, just call them out. Yes. And, and this is quite funny because when I have started calling them out, saying, look, this is the reason I'm being attacked, is because I am exposing this vile criminality. Um, you know, a lot, I would say 90% of it stopped. You're still getting it from mm. a little group, but... Mm by their fruit children. No, the other thing, Wilfred, is people say to me, SRA is a nonsense, it doesn't exist. And I say to them, look, it doesn't matter what you believe in, they believe in it and they do it. And so if we look at their history of really of Satanism in the UK, I mean, what are we looking at? How established is this? How widespread? The earliest documented research, which was done by Tim Tate in his book, Children of the Devil, which is available online, uh, for anyone who wants to read it, it's, it's very difficult to get as a hard copy, although apparently there's a copy of it in the British Library. And he documents quite well uh, that SRA in the UK goes back to at least the 18th century. 18th and it century. was the upper classes who were very active in it. Not all the upper classes, no. but some of them, no. including some parliamentarians. Yep. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Mm. And at their meetings, there were reports of children being abused, by the parliamentarians. So we've come one full circle, but I would point out that compared to the 18th century, SRA has exploded yep. hugely. Yep. So whoever says it doesn't exist is living on another planet and needs yep. to have their head examined because it is a reality. They are suffering from severe cognitive dissonance, simply ignoring the evidence in front of them. Now, and the other thing is people say to me, I don't believe in Jesus. What, where was Jesus when these children were being abused? And, and it's a difficult one to answer because some of, some of these people saying this are the victims themselves and they've suffered horrific abuse. And they say to me, but I called out for God so many times, he never come, John, he never come. Uh, so it's difficult for me really to sort of, um, uh, you know, try and console these people because I will just upset them and insult them if I start um, going on about deities. Now, all I say to them is that this isn't religious. Mm. You know, uh, Jesus Christ is not religious. I believe in Jesus. I think he protects me in the work I do. And the more I do this work, the more I believe in him. Yes. Um, uh, you know, and, and I have to say to him, look, that, you know, this isn't about um, Jesus allowing it to happen. The, you know, this is like the devil has taken over. We have seen the perversion in society get bigger and bigger and bigger. And when we go on about politicians, we look at people like Cyril Smith and Leon Britton. Mm. The intelligence services, in my opinion, would have known that these blokes were involved in satanic abuse. Yeah. God knows what's going on, but he's waiting for a lot of us to act in cooperation with him to stop this evil. Yeah. He's not going to do it all for us while we sit back and do nothing. And unfortunately, Largely as a society over the past 40, 50 years, we have been experts at doing nothing on SRA. Yeah. We have to take responsibility and when we take action, God will step in and move even more than he has in the past on this issue. He has been working. I've had SRA survivors telling me about how they saw angels coming to help them when yeah, they were children. Yeah, I've heard that as well. Yes. So this is not uh, a case of him just simply ignoring their, their needs. In fact, I said to the SRA survivor, well, who do you think 
is the boss of the angels and sends them to help you. I believe it's Jesus Christ. And the fact is that we need the power of God to help us to overcome these obstacles, which are huge. We're talking about yeah. very extensive so infiltration okay. of our society by Satanists. Not at all easy to deal with. But God is changing things. I've seen how people are becoming more and more open to talking about SRA. You always have a few people who want to put their head in the sand. We should just ignore them and get on with the job. Right, burning question. Why do people indulge in SRA? Um, if we look at the testimonies that have come out, and, and, hmm. and even in the interviews that, that, that I've had with yourself, um, we speak that they eat feces, human feces. You know, they, they, they eat um, aborted fetuses. They eat the intestines of recently murdered children. They have sex with dead bodies, uh, with corpses. They have sex with animals. I mean, basically, I, I used to sit in a lot as an evidence gatherer in, on autopsies. Mm. They're vile. Mm. They stink. You have to throw up. You can't help yourself. They are so appalling. Mm. Yet these are people that are indulging with sex with these corpses. Yeah. So the smell for one would be appalling. Yeah. To eat human feces would make you reach and would cause all sorts of bacterial issues yeah. in the stomach. Mm. If you if you have sex with a corpse, you're gonna get a bacterial infection that you won't get from a living yeah. being. Um, you know, you're gonna open orgies, that are gonna be rife with infection. Mm. The damage that is inflicted on the children, yeah. you know, sometimes it's lifelong with, with damaged wombs, mm. torn anuses, mm ruptured bowels and things like that i mean it's you couldn't sell this because it's just so appalling yeah so why do they do it what do they get out of it it's it's all part of the belief system that's why i always say you have to call it satanist ritual abuse then people at least have a chance to understand what is the belief system behind this horrific behavior? Yeah. The belief system is Satanism, the real Satanism, not the package for mass consumption Satanism to try and help mainstream it. What you mean like people like Anton LaVey, that sort of people? Yeah, or the kind of respectable face that they are increasingly Alistair trying to Crowley, present yes, so that they can get mainstream acceptance, recruit more people, for example, some of the Satanists in the USA have been able to convince people to get their children to go to their after-school Satan clubs. Can you imagine how naive people are? Wil Wilfred, you've got um, things like Toys R Us uh, were selling Ouija boards for girls, yeah, for te yeah. young teenage girls. It's getting a lot worse. There's a mass recruitment of young people going on in the media. For example, Disney is going down that road. They are presenting stories which show Satan and witchcraft yep. in, a, in a very positive light and black witchcraft is Satanism and so they are targeting children increasingly and more extensively through the big media but, like but, but what Disney it, for what, example and Netflix is also doing a lot Netflix, of programs yeah. uh, and what is their benefit how do people benefit I mean what do they gain yeah, out of it but, but to come back to your recent question because they are brainwashed from young if they were born into Satanism yeah. To do these kind of things that we would consider horrific, they get used to it, but also it becomes a habit. And there is a spiritual element here that because of the, the depravity of what they do, they are giving an open door to demons to influence their thinking, influence their actions. And so they become very desensitized uh, or if you don't believe in demons, they could just become desensitized through frequent practice of this behavior. I, I mean, and so it doesn't mean as much to them as it would mean to a normal person like us. It's a bit like if somebody lived in, in a house which had a rotting corpse in it. Yeah. At first, it'll be tough to put up with. But after a while, they probably get yeah. used to the smell. And a person coming in from the house, uh, new to the house, would notice the smell a lot and, more. And, and also, um, uh, when I've dealt with, with sex okay. offenders, I say, you know, it, it's, it's what they call like the hurdle system, where in order, when someone first abuses a child, and they give an example of a guy who goes out to Thailand, he wants sex with a child, he goes there for that, he's frightened, he's scared, um, and then, but he's gonna do it. And the first time he does it, his heart's beating, and he does it with a child, he's disgusted with himself, he's repulsed, but the next day, he does it again and the hurdle gets lower, lower, and after a couple of times, there is no hurdle, it's gone. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so sex with the child is normal. Yeah. I've heard cases, as much as you have, of hearts of, of beating children being cut out and bitten. Mm. Um, yes. I heard one the other day where a, um, a young girl who's five had gaffer taped to her like a long letter opener and, and a hand was pushed by, by one of the, the witches in the coven mm. in and out of a, of a two month old baby girl's vagina till the girl was killed. They made a little five year old do this. When we get the reins list and we look at prominent politicians, mm. actors serving and past p police officers of prominence are on there, this is what these people do. This is what they do. You know, w we can't stand by. I went into this, Wilfred, into this well because I cannot stand by and let the kids get hurt. It, yeah. it, 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 it eats me away. Mm. You know, I am on this 24 7 now. Look, I mean, we're, we're averaging now nearly 400 live views, which is incredible. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, but what, what drives you to yeah. carry on doing what you're doing? Well, ju just to point out, for example, um, something you touched on just now S Satanists will involve children in all kinds of depraved behavior because Satanists don't just want to abuse children. They want to corrupt them to the core yep. and make those children grow up to become just like them. Yep. They are trying to reproduce themselves in the children. So they force the children to participate in ritual killings. They force the children yep. to sexually abuse each other. They force the children to uh, mutilate each other and do all kinds of terrible things to make them also desensitize. And that's what you were describing just now, yeah. desensitization. Yeah. The more you do it, the less you feel appalled by it and you just get used to doing it. And, and it, it's an elite society. This is like masonry, where they will have a hold on each other because they know what the other person's doing. And when they're in trouble, they will start calling favors, which is probably, in my opinion, why Surrey police refuse to investigate the case of Jeanette's. Yeah. Allegations, mm -hmm. and if we take Jeanette for for example, and, and and Vicky Ash and many other victims of satanic abuse, you look at the strength and compassion and fortitude, and love for humanity that these individuals, these incredibly strong individuals, have. You know that they want to stop it. Yeah. One lady contacted me um, the other day. She's the one that was used to put this this knife thing in and out of a little baby. Mm. And she said they kept saying to her, just come a little bit in shot here, Wilfred. Mm -hmm. the she kept, they kept saying to her, you're one of us. And she said, even at the age of five, she was saying, I'll never be one of you. I'll never be one mm. of you. You know? Um, and what is it doing to the minds? I mean, I've done some shitty things, I would say, in my life. And, and, and I asked for forgiveness. N never anything like that. So what must it do to these people's minds? Yeah, How but they live with that. The interesting thing, and coming back to the the God point you mentioned just now, is Jeanette mentioned in her testimony that she always sensed that she was being told to keep her eyes on the light, and that the light was was there near her, right. in front of her, and that she should keep Who her eyes on it. Who was telling her to do that? That's the interesting question. Yeah. I believe it was God telling her, yeah. "Keep your eyes on the light." Yeah. Jesus revealed himself as the light of the world and God is often described as as light for example those who've had near-death experiences they describe yeah, a being yeah, of light yeah, the devil who the term is Lucifer the bearer of light you yeah know, the, the devil can, star can imitate whatever, everything and it's all deception uh, lots of it? things it's all deception but what I'm talking about is the real light so it wasn't as if she was completely alone and and so there are many reports which go uh, quite unnoticed of SRA survivors having this supernatural presence with them, sometimes angels, sometimes God, even alongside the terrible things that they're suffering. Well, but, but at the same time, God does expect us to do our bit. And that's why I do what I do, because I know I have a responsibility to Him to act on what I know. Knowledge brings responsibility. And, and, you don't just know and then move on to something else well, when it comes to SRA. Well, the, the other thing we got to look at is that uh, on the range list, we had Bishop uh, Conor McCormick or... Cardinal whatever, McCormick. Yeah, yeah, who was, he's dead now. Mm. And he was the, uh, you, you know, the Cardinal for the UK. So he was in charge of the Catholic Church for the United Kingdom. He's on the range list. He is on the range list. There were rumours that the Cardinal for Belgium w was um, involved with Mark Dutroux. Okay, it's only an allegation, it never came out. 
so we're seeing these people high up in the Catholic Church. How dare they? How dare the Catholic Church not investigate and hold this out? If 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 Joan Coleman and and um, the investigator for um, Mark Dutroux can expose people so high up in the Catholic Church that were involved in satanic ritual abuse, which would have involved the rape and killing of young children, mm. how dare the Vatican not have these people held to publicly held to held to task? Well, part of the problem, as you see with the police, is the usual tactic of Satanist infiltration. They infiltrate an organization and invert. Satanists are always inverting things, especially things which have a good value, good objectives. They go in and turn it upside down to become evil. And what they have done with the police, for example, is turn the values and objectives and duties of the police upside down. So in many cases, the police, instead of protecting the children and yeah. the victims, they are attack. protecting the abusers. Yeah, and they attack the victims and the children. They're, 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 they've done the same with social services. Instead uh, of social services protecting children, now they're protecting abusers. And, and I want to say something, you know, hmm. uh, hopefully I'll have my Dan caught in the Met Police. And I, I, I want it known, if the police are watching this, everything that happens i pass on to ixa the independent inquiry there's a young girl come to me the other day she was sexually assaulted on many occasions in the locker room by her sergeant in the met police young girl her first year in she spent her first year crying she reported it and mm. then they said to her she's now going to face misconduct because mm. she didn't report it early enough mm. and her colleagues some of which witnessed the sexual mm. assault by this guy mm. who had got previous for doing it mm -hmm. on young girls They've turned around to these um, uh, coppers and said, you had a duty to report it, why didn't you? And they've then threatened them as witnesses to mm. a serious sexual offence with misconduct. Yet the guy who's done it has, has, has walked free. Mm -hmm. And if that happens on the microcosm, what happens on the macrocosm? Mm. You know, so we have got case after case in this massive city. I want to just show us how big this city is out there. Look, huge, huge city. There's Wilfred and myself there, you know, on the mm -hmm. roof. Right, there is Satanism, ritualistic abuse going on to this day out there. There is not one unit set up to deal with specifically with satanic ritualistic abuse and all the add on offences that go with it. Not one, you know. I, I, I do surveillance sometimes in London as well, and uh, there are quite a few SRA locations in London. And I remember going to one where a very reliable witness who is an SRA survivor told me she firsthand saw uh, just a few months ago the ritual sacrifice of a 14 year old girl in a building in, in the right. basement of a building right so I go along to check it out one night and I was surprised to find only about 50 yards away was a police station yeah so I thought Right, they must either have the police in their back pocket or some of the police are taking part in this coven. Uh, but something's going on here. This is not normal for the Satanists to take such a risk to actually do a, a sacrifice only 50 yards or so from a police station. Wilfred, we've seen police officers named on the range list. There's another police officer I'm not going to name. Um, has come forward as this knight in shining armour to sort of help victims and, and there's been rumours uh, that he's he's actually attended a satanic um, ceremony. Oh, you know, I know he has attended yeah, yeah, a satanic yeah. ceremony. And, and he's turned around yes. and said he was doing surveillance. Now I've spoken to people past Satanists and, and victims of Satanism and I said, what are the chances of you walking in on, on, on a ceremony and just being an observer? I said, impossible, totally and utterly impossible. He was participating in the ritual. Yep. He tried to give an excuse to the person who spotted him and that I know that person who told me about his participation, that he was just there undercover, which is rubbish. You don't go undercover into no, this no, kind of thing. No. You will become part of the problem. You will be forced to take part in the killing. And on top of that, I know that when uh, SRA survivor tried to report it to the police, he, he did something very terrible to her to try and silence her. So this person is completely well, well, a Satanist uh, uh, another, abuser. Another woman has come forward and spoke to me about this guy. Again, I'm not going to name him. Mm. And he sexually assaulted her in her own flat. 
in her own flat. Yes. You know, yes. that's uh, his that's his method of operating. Unfortunately, you, you know. So so when we we see that the other thing, we look at Jeanette's testimony. She said she was taken mm. to um, a police section house in southwest London. Um, now th this may be corroborated by someone else, but and she was sexually <coughs> abused there. She was raped there. She was tortured, and it was filmed. There was police officers masturbating. In, in half uniform, and she remembers this with total clarity. Mm. Um, now, if we look at what came out in the IICSA inquiry, that there was a police section house uh, in South East London, in Kennington, in South East London, mm. where it was alleged that porno films were made. Mm. Porno films were made. Um, and there was information come through that someone that was obstructing me high up in the police was actually facilitating this as well. All right. And again, it can't get out because mm. Um, I haven't got the evidence at the moment for it, but the building was used, the porno films were mm. used. There's links then with this building and organised criminals mm. that they were distributing it. Mm. Um, the British police, the National Crime Agency, have, um, have never ever admitted and always denied the existence of snuff movies. Mm -hmm. Whereas we've got victims of, of satanic ritual abuse who are always saying that they were filming it. They were filming the murders of children. Yes. They were filming it going on. So snuff movies, you know, what have most, you heard about most them? Most Satanist covens will film all their activities, including the abuse, the torture, the killing. A lot of Satanist covens will film that. The big question, which hasn't been solved yet, is where do they keep the film? Yeah, 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 that's right. And, and who is preventing, this is why the police is so compartmentalised, the specific offences have to be dealt with by special units. Mm -hmm. They say it's down to training, but I think that's bullshit. I think that this occurs so they can manage, you know, uh, the information and also they can keep a governance of these films. Yes, there needs to be a lot more accountability over the police. The present accountability system just doesn't work in practice. The IPCC is practically Oh, they're worthless. Yeah, useless. Yeah. But on top of that, there also needs to be strict accountability regarding police joining the Freemasons. Yeah. Why on earth do police officers join in such large numbers the Freemasons, which is a secret society? What good will that do for the work that they, well, they well, are involved well, in? And, and you're talking an oath within an oath. Um, and, yeah, and where is their loyalty, their first loyalty, to the secret society or to the police and the public? And, and certain units, Wilfred, you know, you won't exist in there unless you become a Freemason. Yeah. You know, um, there used to be things like uh, the dog handlers mm -hmm. and things like that. And some of the, um, the, the, the more high up specialist uh, CID departments. You know, I remember when I was in the CID in uh, central London, the office mm. would clear mm. on like a Wednesday. I mean, they've got their own lodge. Their own lodge is sort of um, over, if we can see, it's over that way, the lodge of St. James. Um, and it's down there actually in St. James, just a stone throw away from St. James's Palace. Um, you know, and it's, you know, every now and then you'd see what's called the summons, their yes, little booklets, yes. and they'd leave them on their desks. Yes. And they'd have all the names of who was in attendance, you know. And yes. this is um, this is how these coppers know each other. So people get promoted not on their um, not on their ability mm. to police, but on, on their position in, in, in the lodge. Yes. I mean, it, it is astounding that the public don't make a much bigger fuss and a sustained fuss about the amount of influence in the police that the Freemasons, well, a should, secret it, society, exercise. It should, it should be banned, it shouldn't be allowed. It, it should, should be banned. Should they be should not be allowed to join the Freemasons, no. especially if they're supposed to be public servants enforcing the law. Yeah. See, one of the biggest problems with SRA in this <clears> country <throat> is that we have the laws that will cover the crimes that are being done by Satanists, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they're not being enforced. That, 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 yeah, I know people saying we need stronger laws. No, we've no, got fantastic laws. We need the laws to be enforced. Yeah. That's the key. And they're not going to be enforced as long as you have this constant lack of accountability for police failure to right, act. Right, right. Let's start something up here. We have seen since we've, we've started to sing mm -hmm. with Jeanette um, how massive uh, it's become people writing letters in. And I say emails have no worth. It must be a letter. Letters going in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and we need to then start sort of wanting uh, the police, our police, to start investigating satanic ritual abuse. 
So I think that there should be disclosure, disclosure of masonry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, also it should be outlawed within the police environment. Mm -hmm. um, and we should also, these officers that are on the range list, and they are on there, one of them was, a, was very high up in Hampshire Police. Well, two of them were. Mm -hmm. I think one's dead now, so I don't want to say the wrong, wrong one. Mm. Um, are actually mentioned in Hampshire Police. Now, if we look at Hampshire, that was where the centre of the range list occurred. This mm -hmm. is where the offences were occurring, mm -hmm. in the New Forest you know, uh, and that sort of um, corridor towards Berkshire and Hampshire. Yeah. Um, so they had governance for these investigations. Mm -hmm. And there was one copper that come forward to expose stuff and he was shut down. Yeah. You know, uh, we look at people like Lenny Harper, who's, who exposed Hope de la Garenne, and there was torture, mm. murder and rapes and mutilation of children there, which I think was probably satanic yes. in the basement. Yes. Again. Yes, We're it has a lot of thing. signs of satanic abuse, yes. You know, and then what happened to Lenny Harper? They attacked him. They did to him what they tried to do to the judge in the Mark Dutro case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By accusing him of not getting the right results, of, of breaking the rules and kicking him out so that they could replace him with a more pliable leader for the investigation and who would give them the result they wanted. And in Belgium, people power saved the day. Over 300,000 people took well, to the streets it could have been, um, to demonstrate. Kareen said it was probably more 700,000. More, more 700,000. Yeah. And the Belgian fire brigade took their water hoses and blasted the windows. And blasted they? The windows. Yeah, so they needed cleansing. When are we going to have that kind of willingness of the people in this country to take to the streets yeah. to demand that SRA be dealt with? Yeah. Then the government and the police will be forced well, well, to well, take effective well, the, action. The other thing, we, we've got at the moment this Black Lives Matter thing that's sweeping through and um, I'm appalled that people, again, I'm not putting myself in, in a position to make racial, look, abuse is colourless. This happens to all religions, all races, all colours, all economic backgrounds here. You know, it should be children's lives. So I said angels' lives matter. These are little angels and no one cares, no one's bothered. There should be an outrage. They're pulling down these statues. I can't, I'm really not interested, do what you want and all that. But um, there's a statue outside the BBC by Gill, clearly showing a man abusing a little boy with his hands on his winkle. You know, again, nothing about that. Um, we've got statues of a paedophile after paedophile that have been outed. They're still there. No one's bothered about that. Nothing is more detrimental to our society than, than the destruction of a child. You know, and, and if you destroy them sexually, you destroy their spirit, their soul. You, you, you're going to cause dirt throughout of, of, of the rest of society because of what you've done. But no one's bothered, Wilfred. How do we wake people up? I mean, we're running now. We was running on 400 hits now. We're now dropping and dropping and dropping. Um, you know, but if I was to go on the street now into the Black Lives Matter protest, I would be on 2,000 hits. Easy, mm -hmm. 2,000 mm -hmm. hits. You know, mm -hmm. there would be no worth in what I'm filming. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't, you know, I've done public order and people are all of a sudden they're on there mm -hmm. and it was to do with anti-lockdown and tens of thousands, I've got 100,000 hits on that. And actually it was quite boring. Mm -hmm. It was two hours of just people shouting and moving about. Yeah. This has got substance. We are speaking out against the most damaging, damaging thing ever and, and no one's bothered. People, that people can do something about this. They shouldn't just watch and then walk away and do no. some, and, and forget about it. They should be sharing f filmed interviews like this with all their contacts and friends. They should be getting the word out about SRA. And by doing that, they're helping to challenge the myth that SRA does not exist. By doing that, they're helping to mobilize public action on these issues. Well, and on top of that, I would stress that we, we, we need to be shouting it from the rooftops, talking about this regularly to our friends and contacts about SRA. We should get over this kind of awkwardness that a lot of people seem to have when it comes to talking about SRA. Um, because it's, it's a myth that you can't talk about SRA. Of course you can. You just got to keep talking about it until people listen. And it's the same with, with many issues that of importance. There are always people who don't want to listen, but never mind, don't waste time on them. Keep going, keep spreading the word around, well, well, and Wilfred, keep pushing. You're going about action. Next week is the summer solstice. Now, is this a key date in the satanic calendar? It's one of the key dates. Right, you know, there'll be people that are watching this that live near historic pagan sites. 
that may well be used for satanic abuse. Mm -hmm. You know, well, you've all got cameras on your phones. You know, these people have to park up their cars to walk to these sites to, to commit this abuse. Children were brought in in vans, as it was saying in Jeanette Sings. These sites mean a lot to these people. You know, they are, uh, some of these places are on public record. They're ancient sites that are used. We've got the solstice coming up. You know, how comes none of this has ever been captured on camera? How comes this footage isn't there? How comes the police aren't called because of people meeting at night? Something was said to me about the, um, the police helicopter, which is based in an area called Lippitz Hill in Epping Forest. Mm -hmm. And Epping Forest has got a huge history of satanic abuse. Mm. It's owned by the City of London, mm -hmm. which is the same people that own this uh, farm where Jeanette's um, uh. abuse went on. And, and I was told by someone that was from the air support unit that they're not allowed to film anything within a 15 mile radius of their base unless it's a specific call. Yeah. And the reason being was because they were, were they were getting heat sources cropping up at night in the forest, mm. uh, you know, of human activity. Mm. So not from animals, wild animals, condensed heat sources like rituals, like gatherings were there. Yes. So yeah. so whoever puts that out there is aware, you know, on a management level in the police. I mean, mm. we should be screaming to to Chris to Dick, the, the, in charge of um, the um, Met Police, at why aren't these officers linked to satanic abuse? outed. Audrey Harper wrote a book, Dances with the Devil, in which he says about the, um, the abuse and the child murders that went on in London mm. and also in Surrey, funny mm. enough, Surrey again, um, and how she was picking up children for sex parties. Yes. You know. Um, this was in the 1960s. In the 60s through to the 70s. This, look at the range list, there is an officer from the Metropolitan Police, he was in charge of the Vice Unit, he's even written a book at how brilliant he is. He's named on that, so why... And he's also denied in his book that the, SRA exists. Yep, that's right, there you go. And he makes out he's a hero. Now this guy is, is named on the range list. So why aren't letters being written? Look at the range list, right? I'm not gonna name the guy publicly because I wanna keep operating. But look him, look him on in there, he's on there. He's in there and he's written a book, right? Um, that you can find. So why aren't letters put in? And let's let's look at all this bloke's um, investigations. Whilst he was on the vice unit, which was covering the area where children were going missing, Soho, which Audrey Harper ties in. Audrey's testimony ties in with what this guy should have been doing. Mm. You know, and this guy's a Satanist. Mm -hmm. You know, he's named as a Satanist. Please look at the range list, look him up, and then write letters. Let's write loads of letters into to. Um, uh, Krista Dick and, and to the Home Secretary about why this guy is not being brought in and investigated for malfeasance in a public office. Mm, yes. You know? Yes. Please, please, if there's researchers out there, look him out, look him up. The racist R I A R A I N S. It's an acronym, Satanic List, put that in, you'll find it. It's about fifteen pages. This guy is on there. He was head of the, the vice unit for the Metropolitan Police. Why? Why? What did he cover up? What did this guy cover up? It's public record, it's public domain. They're civil servants, public servants. He's still drawing a police pension. Still drawing a police pension. And if we look, Wilfred, can we, I don't want to go on too, too much about the, 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 the terrible side of it, mm -hmm. but what they actually do to children. What, what stories have you heard, accounts have you heard of, of what children have not only been through, but what they've had to do to others and what they witnessed? Well, it's a very long, sad list, including children being ele electrocuted, children being suffocated or being regularly drowned. I know one SRA survivor who was taken to be drowned at a swimming pool every Saturday, every week, right. uh, when she was a child. Uh, being forced also on the weekend to, to eat feces and drink urine. Right. Um, they also do things like forcing the child to to hurt other children, to sexually abuse other children. Yep. They sometimes will encourage the child to get close to an animal, like a, a, a beloved pet, and then force the child to kill that animal. So they're trying to corrupt the child to make the child Ruthless. Well, I've heard that uh, uh, animals been made to have sex with children. Oh yes, yes. One, one woman was saying that they would um, 
put spread something on her. She was only a little girl on a vagina. Yes. And the, the pet dog, uh, and then she had to then perform oral sex on the, her pet dog, mm. a five-year-old girl. I met a survivor who was forced to have sex with a dog, and then the dog was ritually sacrificed, and then she was forced to eat part of the dog. Right. So let's. So let's, these sort of things are happening, and if we keep silent, then. You know that saying, which very much applies to SRA, I think. Silence means consent. Yep. We are consenting in, yep. in practice. Maybe not in, in our thinking, but in practice, when we do nothing about SRA, we are consenting to these horrific things continuing against children. But we need to be outraged. We need to be appalled. We need to be disgusted to the pit of our guts. And we need the removal of all these chief constables that are allowing this to go uninvestigated. We need the Home Secretary to do something, otherwise they stand down, right? They are our servants. They need to do it. And people that are named, they like, keep going on about this one police officer. Come on, let's, let's get this man held accountable. These are people that are having sex with animals. They are letting, making animals have sex with little children. They are cutting, cutting little children, sorry, it's back then, gizzards and then making other children eat them. They are making children cut the throats of babies. I've heard that on so mm -hmm. many occasions. Mm -hmm. uh, this little girl was made to force a, a spike into a baby mm -hmm. and there was someone's hand pushing her and they sellotaped it to her. This is what these, these bastards are doing. Mm -hmm. And they're in public office mm -hmm. and we're allowing it. What sort of human beings are we? Do you know what, you know, Jesus Christ don't want this. He doesn't want this. You know, and we can't, we can't want this. This is not a religious thing. What, right? what, I, what I often ask is not why does God allow this? What I often ask is why do human beings allow this? Yeah, yeah, because exactly. Because we can do something about yeah, it. Right we on. can, at the very least, try to do something about yeah. it. We can speak out. We can challenge those in authority who have a responsibility yeah. to do something. And like any job in the world, if they're not fit for their job, if not, not willing to do their job, then they should be sacked. Simple as that. We help to pay their salaries with our tax money. If they're not willing to do their job to protect yeah, yeah, the most go. vulnerable then people in our society, then they got to go. They're not earning their money. They need to be kicked out Wilfred, and replaced by someone who's willing to do the job. Wilfred, look at us. We're standing, Wilfred and myself here, look, get, want to get a backdrop there. But behind Wilfred and myself, 10 million people, 10 million people we're standing on a rooftop and we are proclaiming our position in this battle against evil right we're openly proclaiming people down there can hear us people in the flats can hear us and you know and there's thousands probably tens of thousands can hear us on these podcasts these podcasts will go to youtube and they'll be sent abroad right we're saying what we're doing these satanists won't do this they won't stand up and say what they do because they're scared to say what they do they're frightened. They have to hide away and they have to protect their, their evil little mates and what they're doing. Secrecy is one of their biggest weapons. Mm. It's secrecy, hiddenness, which is why we have to be very clear about Satanist ritual abuse and clear about speaking out on it, which has always been my practice. Right. I don't have patience with people who try to dilute the words, right. who try to drop the word Satanist from ritual abuse, yeah. because that's all just helping to keep the Satanist concealed. We need to expose them very publicly because hiddenness, consumment is their strength. Yeah. And we need to take that strength away. And they also spread myths and, and lies to keep people docile like little sheep. For example, the myth that you can't do anything about SRA, SRA doesn't exist, uh, it's useless to try and stop it, etc., etc. Yeah, yeah, All yeah, this yeah, bull yeah. that we need to challenge through our actions, not just through our words. We need to, to get acting. Everybody has a part to play. Everybody can start sharing the message with their contacts, with their friends. Everybody can write to the MP about this. Don't forget the MP is also your servant, just as the police are, yeah, yeah. just as social services are. And all these groups are just doing what they want to help the Satanists Wilfred. without being held accountable. We need to help hold them accountable. Right, and, and you're right. Why does God allow this? Why do people allow this? Why is the church allowing this? I think the church's response <coughs> is coloured to us to 
probably quite a large extent by the infiltration that has taken place. Yeah. And you can't really blame the church because the church is open as an organization, has yeah. to be open. Yeah. In fact, people often accuse the church of being too, too closed. And it has to be open to let people join them so they can't screen them out to, to make sure they're not Satanists. And they do infiltrate. Audrey Harper goes on about how she would infiltrate a church. Yes, but at the same time, uh, the church does have a responsibility to act and speak out more. And I deal with church people and I find it very frustrating when they don't want to act because it's like the parable of the Good Samaritan in the Bible. Jesus made it very clear that the good guy in that parable was the Samaritan who acted and took yeah. practical action to help. And I found all sorts of excuses being made to avoid action because the church unfortunately has the, the same problem as many members of the public do, which is to, to think that if you speak out, all sorts of bad things are going to happen to you. It's too awkward to yeah. speak about. But that's wrong. That's untrue. And at the same time, I would emphasize that more people in the church are starting to speak out. More people in the church are starting to show a lot of interest in this issue. So there is a shift starting, just as there is a shift in, among the public now. It is not all negative. There is positive, but we want the shift to happen quicker and more because as we speak even, there are children out there who are being subjected to SRA. So this yeah. is an urgent issue. And I bet none of these people that have been accused of it would ever take a lie detector test. Not one of them. I bet not one of them would do it. No, they wouldn't. Uh, but at the same time, the fact that we are speaking out and exposing them may cause them to reduce what they're doing. Yeah. So I always say, every time you speak out publicly about SRA, you are helping to protect a child from this unimaginable an unimaginable horror. Yeah. So you're doing something good and positive every time you speak out, every time you get over whatever awkwardness you might feel, to just call, tell it like it is. We just need to tell well, it like it is. Well, we have to, and I'm going to cross the line here, and I say to anyone with a child, with, with an infant child, an infant granddaughter, an infant grandson, look at that child and imagine an act being put on them like we've just mentioned. Imagine the noise if you was to put 240 volts through that child. Imagine the noise and if you was to insert a sharp knife into their sex organs repeatedly. Imagine it. And these people do this. This is what they do. You know, you need to wake up and you need to get on board. And, and, and we can't tolerate any of this. Well, I don't believe in God. I don't believe. It doesn't matter what you believe in. It doesn't matter. They believe in what they do and they do it to their children. We are not pushing the name of Jesus down anyone's throat. That's your choice. That's your choice, what you want to believe in. But really, there is no choice. There is no fence to sit on when it comes to children being mutilated and tortured in this way. You know, and you tell me, anyone, I defy anyone to turn around and tell me that Jeanette was lying. Yes, anybody with even a, a tiny bit of moral values yeah. will see very clearly that this is extremely hideous behavior that needs to be stopped and will put that into action in trying to get action to stop it and of course the, the key action in all this is law enforcement yeah. and to, do, to get that done we need to pressure the government the police and social services to do their job to act to protect the children instead of what they're doing now because of they've been so infiltrated by the Satanists, which is to protect the abusers. Satanist inversion once again, instead of protecting the people who they were set up to protect, they're protecting the wrongdoers. Yeah. But by exposing them, shame them, embarrass them, embarrass the hell out of them yeah. until they go back to their original objectives, which is to protect the well, children. Well, well, of course, it's shameful and they're cows because none of them admit to it. None of them admit to what they do. They all lie. All of them are lying. Yes, but if we keep on going at them about it and say, you know, you should be sacked and call for their resignation, call for them to be sacked if they don't want to do their job, yeah, yeah. then I'm sure that out there, there will be people who are willing to take their place. People like Mike Veal, for Mike example, Veal, exactly. who will come in and do the yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we just got to be persistent, hammer at the door, badger them, 
keep badgering them for as long as it takes until change happens. Um, Mike Ville spoke out against Satanism. He publicly <laughs> accused Ted Heath of being not just a paedophile, but a Satanist. And he said he was 110% certain. Chief Constable Wiltshire, he now faces disciplinary uh, uh, because of minor allegations made against him. So he's done to him what they've done to myself, Maggie Oliver, Lenny Harper. They do it all the time. And then they use the mainstream media to do it. But do you know what? Let's come to his assistance. So if there is um, uh, a, a, a discipline panel, let's all write to um, Wiltshire Police, whoever's running it, maybe Cleveland, maybe Wiltshire, I'll find out. And let's come to his support. Let's inundate, inundate their chief constable with letters of praise. Victims and survivors come forward and say how you're proud to have a public servant like, like Mike Veal and that this man should be totally exonerated, praised and then honoured for his bravery. Let's I think he should be given a knighthood. Knighthood, yeah. In fact, I would encourage letter writers to Let, right, call come for on, him to let's give, give him a knighthood. Let's do that. Let's start up a campaign that Mike Ville is given a knighthood, Nobel Peace Prize, whatever. Let's And a place in the House of Lords. House of, yeah, and let's have a statue of him. Instead of the vile, they've given it to that vile, vile. The government Hogan want to Howell. make an example of Mike Veal. They do, yeah. They want to make an example of Mike Veal that this is what happens to senior police officers when they actually do their job and help to expose SRA. Knight, knighthood for Mike Veal. So That's we must go in the opposite direction yep. to show the government. Yes, Wilfred. We want him to be a positive example for all the future and current ch chief police chief constables. Yeah to follow and to emulate yeah. because if he gets torn down without anyone supporting him, all the other senior police officers are going to think, well, yeah. I must avoid becoming like him by avoiding doing my job on SRA. Yeah. So, so there's a lot at stake here in terms of the example that is set, the public example that is set for the police. So we need to come in big time supporting Mike Veal, calling for him to have a knighthood and a place in the House of Lords. We need parliamentarians like him. Yep. And, and I want to give a good call out, so I've just seen him watching. It's a guy called Paul, and he was my boss for many years in the police, and he's as upstanding as Mike Veal. And mm. he stood up on many occasions mm. and spoke out mm. about child abuse and was told to wind it in. So there are good people that are you know, and Paul came to the assistance of Bill Maloney mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, exposed the Hampstead thing and everything. So, yes. a good, honourable, brave man. We must identify and support those who are good yep. and try and get sacked those who are bad yep, yep, yep. if they don't want to reform. So, so let, let's do this. A knighthood for Mike Veal. Um, Place in the Lords for Mike Veal. Yeah, House of Lords, you know. Then we can yep. go to him to help us with our campaigning. God, yeah, <laughs> we'll be part of Mike Veal's army. Yes. So, um, look, uh, Brian uh, Knox is um, very busy now because himself, Christine, and what they call the Pew with a View crowd um, team, the Pew with a View team. Um, I want to say thank you to Graham Wiseman for your logos. Graham, I, I will endorse your website. Um, but Brian Knox is regularly holding um, baptisms down in Bexhill and Sea. Um, so, if people want to be baptised. I went down the other day and he, uh, he baptised me in the sea. Fantastic experience. I think there's about four people going down to be baptised on Sunday down at Bexhill and Sea. Mm -hmm. You know, they're standing forward, walk, walking, you know, with, in Jesus' army. Do you know what I mean? Not the Jesus army because they're, they're under investigation. But, yeah. uh, you know, you, you know what I mean. Because we are up against evil. This isn't me pumping religion down your throats. We're up against evil mm. here. And, um, and until we, we grasp that this is a spiritual battle. As well know, as a physical as one. As a physical one, yep. Yeah. And so while we're on this plane and we've still got our hands and our feet, Wilfred, we've got to use them to physical effect. Yes. You know, it's yes. no good just sitting there praying yes. and all that. We've got to take the war out there yes. and actively go after these people and, yes. uh, and put an end to it. Yes. God will help us even more if we are willing to make t sacrifices of time, effort, even yeah. reputation and stick our necks out and fight hard for the victims of SRA. Um, I'd like to promote a, a, a YouTube film, which I think a lot of people need to see, and it deals with the issue of tunnels, which you started us off yep, with, yep. Uh, Satanist tunnels across the United States, which are currently being shut down and destroyed by the US military 
right, okay, on, yep. on the orders of President Donald Trump. Right, yep. Donald Trump, I'm surprised to find out many, many people concerned about SRA don't know that Donald Trump has been waging an intense war against SRA and child trafficking for quite a long time now. On YouTube, there's a film called The Underground War now happening or, or happening now. Yes, the underground war happening now. Do have a look at it and it gives details of the operations that Donald Trump has ordered against these Satanist tunnels where they have also found children held in prison in these tunnels, just as happened with Janine. Yeah. And we're talking big scale tunnels, lots of children held in cages, in well, some, well, in some well of them. Mark DeTrue had children in cages. They found children yes, in cages. Yes, and children so in cages on. is a common characteristic of yeah. SRA as well, yeah. as is tunnels. Yeah. And uh, Trump has not tried to publicize this very openly yet, but this YouTube film was put up to let those who are interested in this issue know what's going on. And this helps to explain why they are trying so hard. The deep state, the New World Order, leaders to get rid of Trump because Trump is a menace to the Satanist yeah, abusers yeah. and he has done so much good work on child trafficking which is something that helps to feed the Satanists with victims so he's a real thorn in their side that's why we see all these problems happening now because of the coming November 2020 elections right. so we need to realize that Trump is actually on our side he, he may have done something on other policies that you don't like, but what I'm saying is this is a key issue, SRA, because of what they do to children. And on that issue, at least, he is 100% on our side and doing effective action, not just talking. In fact, he hardly talks about it. Yeah. But that is the war that's going on behind the scene, and that helps to explain a lot of the, the attempts to get rid of him, yeah. in, including the riots that are taking place in America now. Yeah. Not to say there isn't a legitimate racism issue that needs to be dealt with, but the way it's being hijacked... Oh, it is hijacked. ...and by, yeah. by violent Antifa yeah, yeah. activists. And I strongly suspect that Antifa are the stormtroopers of the Satanists yeah. and are being used by them to enforce their will. And Trump is someone that is fighting a very difficult battle and he's being attacked on all sides. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Because when you speak out on SRA, sometimes that happens too. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's, there's a group um, I did an interview with um, Jeffrey Dickens' mm -hmm. granddaughter, mm -hmm. Louise Dickens. Again, she's trying to start off where her grandfather left off. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey Dickens was probably the only politician to openly speak out about the prevalence of, of Satanism. Mm -hmm. He's been on telly speaking and out about SRA. That, so, and SRA. Mm -hmm. And he was staunchly behind Vicky Ash. Um, we, we did an interview with Vicky, uh, Louise and myself and there's a satanic group called SAF, S-A-F-F. Mm. Uh, they've, they've transcribed, they spent, must have spent hours transcribing over an hour of, of footage. Um, and what they do is they then pick out all the little inconsistencies one by one and say, look, John Wedge is a liar. He said this and he said this and he said this and this is what they've done. I'm sure yeah. that many of those inconsistencies were imagined as well. Uh, well, 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 look, deviation does not constitute a breach in law anyway. Yeah. And, and, you know, if I say something happened on a Tuesday morning, it actually happened on Tuesday afternoon, yeah. does that make me a liar? Well, no. But this is what they do, you know. The interesting thing you need to see behind all this is if, as they claim, SRA does not exist, why time and trouble yeah. to attack those yeah. who say publicly that it does exist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, it, if it's nothing at all, if it's yeah. just a fantasy, yeah, yeah. why yeah. are people, a big lie. whole groups of people, Ho Hoekstedt, yeah. Saf, yeah. spending money, spending time, yeah. spending hours and hours yeah, yeah, they've transcribed nitpicking hours, hours of to try and discredit those yeah. who publicly expose yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That shows you that there's a very and, systematic and, and what, committed group why, of people who want to cover this all up. But also, Wilfred, why are they not standing up they want to be a religion. Why are they not standing up and, and then speaking about their religion and what they do? Why not? Because they know it's wrong. They know it's disgusting and it's perverse and they know it's wrong. Unlike in the USA, in, in the UK, they, they are more committed to working behind the scenes. 
but sometimes they try and get mainstream recognition. So for example, in 2004, the Royal Navy were lobbied by a Satanists to allow Satanist rituals to be held on their ships. Yeah. And unfortunately, they granted that. Uh, but I always say Satanism is not a religion. No. It is a, a belief system that supports and authorizes, encourages very hideous practices by the strong against the weak. Yeah. By very the strong Darwinian, against the vulnerable. Very, very Darwinian, yeah. And that is not a religion. It's survival of the fittest, wait, wait, it, it, law of the it, jungle. It's psychopathy. And you cannot try and push forward psycho psychopathy as a religion. No. Because if you allow Satanism to be recognized as a religion, then you must allow um, any form of hideous behavior yeah. to be turned into a religion. Of course, yeah. You know, you can't give it that kind of mainstream respectability by calling it a religion. No. That's why I don't recognize Satanism as a religion. It's a very sick belief system yeah. uh, that is usually working behind the scenes because they don't have the guts to come out openly like other groups normally do to lobby for what they want. And they know they have a lot of their people in different levels of society. And their strength is their hiddenness, as usual, their concealment. So we've got to tear that hiddenness away. Yeah. We've got to tear away their concealment and flash a very sh bright light on them. And we've got to expose also the people who are uh, running groups like SAF yeah. and Hoekstedt. Because yeah. more often than not, mm. they themselves are Satanist abusers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, look, we're running out of, of daylight. and. Um, We've been up here a long time and we covered a lot. Can, I, I want to give you the parting words here, Wilfred. Is, is there words of strength and comfort you can give? Because there's people that are probably frightened and think this is a battle that they can't take part in, a battle they can't win. Let's finish with a word of hope and, and maybe a little prayer for, you know, for the victims and survivors of this. Well, my word of hope would be, having done this for the last 27 years, I have not seen the kind of opening that is now taking place among the public to want to learn more about what's going on with SRA, what the Satanists are up to. I think things like the restriction on our freedoms by the COVID-19 lockdown has caused people to question more what's really going on beyond what the mainstream press are telling them. Yeah. Uh, I think things like this riots that have been happening, uh, which have been quite obviously hijacked by radical groups uh, in the United States is also causing people to question more what are the authorities up to and this opens them up to the things we're saying about cover-ups. Confidence in the police is at an all-time low yep. and this is also causing people to be more open to accept that they are covering up things like SRA. Uh, so people are getting it. You know, for every one skeptic who might well be as themselves, there are, I believe, dozens at least of people who want to know more or who know that SRA exists, who want action taken on it and are horrified by what's going on in their society. So positive change is happening and we need to keep going and keep pushing and realize that one person can make a big difference and we need to and keep telling others and spreading the message. And if you're not sure what to do, you can always contact us. Uh, you can get my email address if you don't have it from John Wedger. Yeah, yeah just contact the John Wedger Foundation. And he can give you my email yeah, address. Put that through. And also, if you need advice and you're scared and you're, you're vulnerable, you can contact me or Wedger. Uh, and we will help you, we will advise you. I mean, I know in my case and probably in yours, if necessary, I'll go to be right next to the person yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, who it needs happens, happens security. A, it happens a lot, yeah. yeah. It does happen a hell of a lot. I'm not worried about having to get into a physical fight with the Satanists. I never have been. So no problem with that if it's necessary. Yeah. Right. Well, look, I appreciate your time, Wilfred, and I'm sure people will. Um, so look, please come forward. You know, the devil's b biggest weapon is our silence. You know, let's arm ourselves, let's speak out, and let's hold those that are hiding in the shadows accountable. And let's shine a light, a light on these sewers and get these rats running.
right so um again we'll look at our campaign for uh knighthood for mike veal and look at the range list and let's let's hold this um ex uh, senior rank detective accountable for his uh his position in, in satanism so um it's not too late anyway well thank you god bless and thank you wilfred thank you